Hello my dear students, welcome back to our channel. Today we can discuss probability. The basics or introduction to probability. Okay, we can go to the video. Before that, if you are watching this video for first time, please subscribe to our channel. If you find this video useful, please like, share and comment. Probability is the branch of mathematics concerning numerical description of how likely an event is to occur or how likely it is that a proposition is true. Or we can say it is the measure of uncertainty of an event numerically. So what is an event? An event for an experiment is the collection of some outcomes of the experiment. In probability, we are mainly considering the examples tossing a coin, tossing an unbiased coin, and throwing a dice, playing cards, etc. We can say many other examples. We are mainly considering these examples while dealing with probability. See, tossing a coin. When we are tossing a coin, then there are two possible outcomes. Either the coin may show heads or it may show tail. So, the two possible outcomes are heads or tails. So, you may get the term outcome. See, the example of throwing a dice. While throwing a die, we have six possible outcomes. Either the die may show one or 2 or 3 or etc it may show 6 dice you may know that we are using while playing a ludo and or like this one side a one marked to one other side two another side three like that six phases it has marking the numbers from one to six so this is outcome even this, the collection of some outcomes of the experiment. For example, if we are choosing the example of tossing a coin, then getting a head is an event with an outcome head. Or we can say getting a, a tail is also an another event with the outcome tail. Or in the example of throwing a dice, uh, we can say getting two, getting the number or the dice showing the number two is an event with the outcome two or we can say another event i will say to understand more getting an even number it is also an event even number then what are the outcomes here the outcomes are two four and six then here three possible outcomes in the first case uh, getting a head uh, there is only one outcome also in the case of getting a tail there is only one outcome here in the case of getting a number two only one outcome but here the event getting an even number then here there are three outcomes so we can say another definition an elementary event an event having only one outcome of the experiment is called an elementary event for example we can say in the experiment of tossing a coin, getting a head is an elementary event. Or in the experiment of throwing a dice, getting a number 1 or getting a number 2. Up to 6. It is an elementary event. Example for not an elementary event, we can say getting an even number in throwing a dice. Or we can say an event of getting a number less than 4. Then what are the outcomes? 1, 2, 3 number less than a 4 in a die. That is 3 outcomes here. This is not an elementary event. In the first example, the experiment of choosing a coin, we have 2 elementary events. One even, we can say even is the event of getting heads and E2 is the event of getting tails. We have 2 possible elementary events. And in the experiment of throwing a dice, we have 6 
elementary events. That is event, we can say an event of getting a number 1, E2, an event of getting a number 2. Like that E6 we can say an event of getting a number 6. Sum of probabilities of all the elementary events in an experiment will be 1. Okay, that we can see later. So, you may understand what's an outcome or what's an event. Okay, and what is an elementary event. To see the formula for finding probability, we can consider the example of tossing a fair coin or tossing an unbased coin. We have seen this has two possible outcomes that is either head or tail. Here we can say two events. Event, an event of getting head and a E2, an event of getting tail. Here we can say there is a 50-50 chance of getting head and a getting tail. Or we can say there is a 1 by 2. The probability is 1 by 2. In each case, for getting a head or for getting a tail, the probability is 1 by 2. How will we find this probability 1 by 2? See, to see P of E1, we can say, what's the number of outcomes in the event E1? Here, only one outcome, etc. That is 1. And uh, what's the total number of possible outcomes in this experiment? We have two possible outcomes, either head or tail. So, we have two possible outcomes. And in the event to event, we have only one outcome. So, we see by using this formula. Number of outcomes favorable to even by number of all possible outcomes of the experiment. So, we can say this is 1 by 2. Like that, P of E2, we can say there is only one outcome in the event to E2. And a, a total number of possible outcomes is 2. So, this is 1 by 2. So, we can say the formula for finding probability of an event E is equal to number of outcomes favorable to E by number of all possible outcomes of the experiment. In the experiment of throwing a die, we can see, consider the event of getting a number less than 4. Then, what are the outcomes here? Number 1, 2 and 3. These are the numbers less than 4. And what is the number of all possible outcomes? There are 6 outcomes in this experiment. So, we can say P of E. Probability of getting a number less than 4. And the experiment of throwing a die is 3 by 6. This is nothing but 1 by 2. Or what is the probability of getting a number 6 in the experiment of throwing a dice we can say p of e1 is equal to getting a number 6 that is the outcome is 6 that is only one outcome so we can say 1 by total number of outcomes are 6 1 by 6 like that we can say getting a number 2 the probability is 1 by 6 getting a number 3 only one outcome that is probability is 1 by 6 we can see more examples. While dealing with a probability, you may see the terms unbiased coin. Unbiased coin means fair coin or no reason to come down more often on one side than the other. And also you may see the terms equally likely. While dealing with probability, we are assuming that the outcomes are equally likely. Uh, in the case of tossing a coin and uh, in the case of throwing a dice. We are assuming that the outcomes are equally likely. Equally likely means each outcome is as likely to occur as the other. For example, we can say in the uh, experiment of uh, tossing a coin, there is equally likely possibility of occurring head and uh, occurring tail. Like that in the case of throwing dice, we say uh, there is equally likely uh, chance uh, to come a one or to come any number. For example, of not an equally likely event, we can say if we have three red balls and one blue ball, then if we are choosing a ball at a random, is the outcome equally likely? Or is the chance of getting a red ball and getting a blue ball is equal? No. 
since we have three red balls, there is a more chance of getting red ball than blue. We can say this is not an equally likely event. Okay. And also you may see the term a random toss. A random toss or random experiments means no bias or interference. We are allowing it to fall freely. Okay, we can see some examples to understand the concept more clear. You have seen the example of uh, throwing a coin. Then the probability of getting a head is 1 by 2 and the probability of getting a tail is also 1 by 2. Like that a simple example here. A bag contains a red ball, a blue ball and a, a yellow ball. All the balls being of the same size. John takes out a ball from the bag without looking into it. What is the probability that he takes out the yellow ball? Second case, red ball. Third case, a blue ball. There are three balls. Red ball, blue ball and a yellow ball. So, we can say number of uh, possible outcomes is equal to three. One red ball, one blue ball and uh, one yellow ball. So, first case, getting a yellow ball. Here, the outcome is only one. So, probability of getting a yellow ball. We can take uh, y as the event of getting a yellow ball. Then, p of y is equal to one by three. Like that, B, P of getting a red ball is also equal to 1 by 3 and a P of getting a blue ball is also equal to 1 by 3. There is only one ball from each. Okay. Just a, a simple example. Next example. Suppose we are throwing a dice once. Throwing a die. Then what is the probability of getting a number greater than a 4? First one. Probability of getting a number greater than 4. And the second one, probability of getting a number less than or equal to 4. So, in the experiment of throwing a dice, what are the possible outcomes? All possible outcomes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. That is, there is a total 6 outcomes. Total number of outcomes is 6. First case, the event of getting a number greater than 4. So, we can say P of E is equal to. Then the outcomes are greater than 4. That is 5 and 6. So, number of outcomes. N of E we can say 2. So, P of C E is equal to 2 by 6. That is equal to 1 by 3. Like that, a second case. Probability of getting a number less than or equal to 4. The numbers are 1, 2, 3 and 4 less than or equal to 4. Here 4 outcomes then the probability is we can uh, call it P of E2 is equal to 4 by total outcomes 6 that is 2 by 3. Here see this is not an elementary event. In the last example we have seen the outcomes was a 1. So that experiment uh, the events were elementary events. Uh, but here the events are not elementary events. One more thing I will say. We know what is an elementary event. An event having only one outcome of the experiment. For example, in the experiment of tossing, probability of occurring head is an elementary event. Like that getting a tail is also an elementary event. The sum of the probability of all the elementary events of an experiment is equal to 1. In the case of tossing a coin, we can say two elementary events. That is getting a head and a getting a tail. Here the probability is 1 by 2. Here also the probability is 1 by 2. Then what is the sum 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is equal to 1. In the experiment of throwing a die, we can see there are 6 possible outcomes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The event of getting 1 has only one outcome that is 1. The event of getting 2 also has a 1 outcome. So, these are, these are all elementary events. So, we consider all the elementary events. Then, its sum is equal to 1. Here, the probability is 1 by 6. Total 6 outcomes. Uh, number of outcomes in event of getting 1 is 1. So, 1 by 6. Like that, here all 1 by 6. 1 by 6, 6 times is equal to 6 times we are adding 
1 by 6 then sum is 1. So, we can say sum of the probabilities of all the elementary events of an experiment is equal to 1. Suppose an experiment has n elementary events, e1, e2, etc., en, then p of e1 plus p of e2 plus etc. plus p of en is equal to 1. So, not this. Also, consider the example of throwing a die. Then we know the outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here uh, consider the event uh, of getting a number less than 4. And uh, another event uh, of getting a number greater than or equal to 4. Here the outcomes are 1, 2 and uh, 3. That is total 3 outcomes. This is not an elementary event. Here also the outcomes are 4, 5 and 6. There are 3 outcomes. This is also not an elementary event. But we can see these events are complementary events. That is here f is nothing but e complemented. See here e is the event of getting a number less than 4. And e complemented means if e is the event of getting a number less than 4. If x is less than 4 then e complemented x is not strictly less than 4. That means x is greater than or equal to 4. That says this is E complement or not E. So one more thing we can say probability of E plus probability of E complement is equal to 1. Here we can say here the probability is 3 by 6 that is 1 by 2 and here also the probability is 3 by 6 1 by 2. Here the sum is 1. One more thing you may notice, probability is always lying between 0 and 1. We can say 0 less than or equal to P of E less than or equal to 1. If P of E equal to 0, we can say the event is impossible event. For example, we can say in the experiment of throwing a die, a number greater than 8. An event of getting a number greater than 8. Here only 6 numbers. So, probability of getting a number greater than 8. 8 is equal to 0. And uh, if the probability is equal to 1, we can say the event is a sure event or a certain event. For example, we can say in the experiment of throwing a die, getting a number strictly less than 7. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all numbers are strictly less than 7. So the probability we can say 6 by 6 is equal to 1. So that is impossible event and a sure event and also complement okay by solving a question if you get the number greater than a one then uh, you have mistake so probability always lie in between zero and a one okay we can see more examples another best example that we are used in probability is playing of cards I will explain more about cards. There are 52 cards in a deck. 52 cards. And uh, this 52 cards are again classified into 4 suits. We can say it is classified into 4 suits. Namely, spade, heart, diamond and a club. We can say spade, heart, diamond and a club. And each suit consists of 13 cards, namely Ace, King, Queen, Jack, and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. So, this is the 13 cards in a uh, suit. Here also 13 cards, here also this 13 cards, here also this 13 cards. So total of 52 cards. 13 plus 13, 26, 26 plus 26, 52 cards. 52 cards are classified into 4 suits, spade, heart, diamond, club. And each suit consists of 13 cards. Namely, ace, king, queen, jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. King, Queen, Jack are called face cards. These are called face cards. 
so this is all about cards there are 52 cards classified into four suits and each suit consists of 13 cards then how many aces are in this cards here in first suit it consists of one ace second suit also one ace third suit also uh, one ace and a fourth suit club also has a one ace so we can say there are four aces and a total number of cards is 52 so if we take the event of getting an ace uh, what will be the probability then probability of e will be if e is the event of getting ace then probability of e is equal to 4 by 52 okay which is equal to 1 by 30 then what is the probability of getting not an ace not an ace means e complement this will be we can say we know a p of e plus p of e complement is equal to 1 so we can say 1 minus 1 by 30 which is equal to 12 by 30 or we can say there are four aces and not an ace 52 minus 4 that is 48 48 cards not ace 48 by 52 which is equal to 12 by 30 that is not an ace 48 by 52 which is equal to 12 by 30 you can find using any way so this is the next example next example two players ravi and john play a tennis match it is known that the probability of ravi winning the match is 0 0.62 what is the probability of john winning the match see here we can say there are two events either even the event of ravi winning the match or e2 event of john winning the match these two events are complementary events if ravi wins the match john will not win the match or john will fail so they are complementary to each other given p of e1 is equal to 0 0.62 therefore p of e2 will be 1 minus 0 0.62 since they are complementary we can say we know p of e plus p of e complement is equal to 1 so p of e complement equal to 1 minus p of e this is equal to 0.38 next example a box contains three blue two white and a four red balls if a ball is drawn at random from the box what is the probability that it will be a white b blue c red first question probability of getting a white ball we can call it w the event w w be the event of getting a white ball there are two white balls here n of w is equal to 2, two white balls and a total number of balls is equal to here 3 blue 2 white and a 4 red so 3 plus 2 plus 4 that is 9 so p of w we can say p of a is number of outcomes favorable to the event of e that is number of outcomes favorable to white ball that is 2 by total number of possible outcomes that is 9 like that b we can say b be the event of getting a blue ball then p of b is equal to there are how many blue balls three blue balls so three by nine which is equal to one by three and a c getting a red ball four red balls four by nine sum of all the events will be one see here two by nine plus uh, three by nine plus four by nine is equal to nine by nine equal to one next to a different example we have seen the example of tossing one coin here tossing two coins simultaneously at the same time tossing two coins example tom tosses two different coins simultaneously what is the probability that he get at least one head here two coins are tossed at the same time in the first coin there are two possibility it may show head or it may show tail in the second coin also there are two possibility head and a tail see if the first coin shows head then the second coin sometimes it may shows head or it may shows tail that is first coin head second coin head and a first coin head second coin tail or if the second coin uh, shows tail first coin may shows head or it may shows tail so here also two uh, possibilities so there are four possibilities total outcomes we can say four two coins shows head 
and two coins shows a tail. One shows head and the other shows tail. Two. Here the question is, what is the probability that he get at least one head? That is minimum one head. In the first case, he has uh, one head. Two heads, at least one. Second case also, third case also, at least one head. So we can say there are three possible outcomes for the event. Let E be the event of getting at least one head. Then N of E we can say 3. Total number of outcomes is 4. So P of E we can say 3 by 4. Or what is the probability of getting no head? Here T T. There is no head. One outcome. So 1 by 4. This is nothing but P of E complement. E is at least one header. Then E complement is no header. Last question. A different question. Like that of throwing a two coin. Here we are throwing two dice. Two dice are thrown at the same time. Write down all the possible outcomes. What is the probability that the sum of the two numbers appearing on the top of the dice is first one 8, second one 13, third one less than or equal to 12. So, we can write all the possible outcomes. Two dice are thrown. First die shows 1 and the second die shows 1. So, 1, 1. We can consider all the examples with the first die showing 1. Next case is first die 1, second one is 2. Like that we can write 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5 and 1, 6. Like that, uh, next case is first die showing 2 and uh, all other of second die. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3. Third case, first die showing 3 and uh, uh, second die 1. Like that, first die 3, second one 2. So here we have in the first row 6, second row 6 and the last 6th row 6 that is 6 into 6, 36 possible outcomes here. See the question, what is the probability that sum of the two numbers appearing on the top of the dice is 8? Next first question is sum is 8. Sum 8 we can say first row there is no 2 plus 6 is 8, second row 2 plus 6 is 8. 3rd row 3 plus 5, 4th row 4 plus 4, 5th row 5 plus 3 and 6th uh, row 6 plus 2 is, is 8. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 cases. So 5 by 36. Second question, a sum is 13. See here the greatest number is 6, 6. The sum is 12. It cannot get a sum 13. So here the possibility is 0. So this is an impossible event. Next case, sum is less than or equal to 12. Here, the maximum is 12. All other numbers is less than or equal to 12. Okay, so the total possibility is 36 by 36, that is 1. So, this is a sure event. So, this is all about probability. See you with another video. Till then, keep watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you.